Uh, we're starting with something that actually happened on the weekend before tampering. The bit, really the biggest news that's happened so far, and that is the Bears and Panthers trade. In the trade, the Bears received DJ Moore, pick nine, pick 61, a 24 first, a 25 second. The Panthers received the first pick in the draft. Uh, I'll, this is huge news, I think, for Justin Fields. His uh, latest Dynasty League football eight, startup ADP from February was QB8. Uh, and then throwing in there DJ Moore, his wide receiver startup ADP was wide receiver 21. Personally, I don't think it does much for DJ Moore. He's been he was playing with a bad quarterback before. He's playing with a really good quarterback who's an average passer at this point. And we're hoping that he takes the jump. Maybe DJ Moore gets him there. But it is really exciting for Fields. The problem is for me is that he's already been kind of valued at, you know, he's going to get the upgrade, right? We're ex we were expecting them to go out and make a lot of moves for him. So really, how much higher can you get with him? Todd, what do we think here? How are we feeling about these players? Are we trying to, you know, acquire them at this point? What, what do we think? Well, the interesting part is I think you got the wrong rival for DJ Moore. This is like one of Dave's <laughs> right, Dave, right. Dave's obsessed with DJ Moore. But clearly it's a huge upgrade for Fields. That I mean, and everyone knew it was coming. You know, it's essentially like, I mean, they pulled the draft day on them. They're like, and throw in DJ Moore because I feel like it is essentially what happened with this. And they got like an incredible amount of picks at the same time. Um, and like you guys said, like Fields is not the most efficient passer. He's not perfect. But this is the thing. Like, I, I do think there's a bump with DJ Moore. I don't think it's astronomical. I don't think he's going from 20 to like 12. You know what I mean? I think it might be like high mid teens because I think what makes them such a great match is, is Justin Fields loves to chuck it. And DJ Moore loves the ball aired out. So you haven't had a guy that's going to, you know, be able to air out the ball to DJ Moore consistently to catch that to like really utilize him. One of the biggest things about DJ Moore over the years is that like he doesn't find pay dirt, you know, and that's because he's got garbage throwing him the ball, you know, now he doesn't. So like, you know, that big playability kind of comes in, which can like change you from like, it's not a consistent sticky kind of stat, but it's going to win you some weeks sometimes. So I think the big playability that feels offers with more the potential is there for more to be able to be that the, be in the conversation for a fringe and like wide receiver one, probably more like a high wide two ceiling, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I, I love the match and like it, it, he literally was a throw in <laughs> to the trade. It <laughs> yeah. like. And it's like, you literally got like, he's not elite, but he's like just a step below elite in terms of like a wide one in the NFL. Yeah, and to your point, I mean, yeah, the Bears like barely passed it all last year, but they were honestly kind of good at it when they did it. Um, they were, most of the receivers were efficient with their opportunities. Justin Fields had a touchdown percentage over 5% for the year, which is above average. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, like, you you know, pump up the volume, those efficiency numbers aren't expected to really stay that way. But, you know, who knows what happens there? And like I said, maybe Justin Fields takes a nice step up in his passing efficiency the way that we've seen with other QBs. Skyler, what do we think? Yeah, the, 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 the Chicago Bears have just been absolutely crushing it thus far. I mean, they've been yeah. the, the loudest team here to start early free agency. It wasn't, they started off obviously with this trade, bringing in DJ Moore. They got back picks 9, 61, 24 first, and a 25 second. But since then, also, it signed TG Edwards over from Philadelphia, which is a big signing. I mean, IDP guys, this is a guy getting 100 tackles a season. He's a really impactful player kind of stole him away from the Eagles. They brought in Tremaine Edmonds, who was the heart of the Buffalo defense, kind of the guy who reads the plays, the reactor, the vocal point uh, for the defense. They brought, they signed a guard, you know, Nate Davis in there, 330 million. They're making all the right moves. So Chicago's going to be a really interesting team. They could sit there at pick nine, take best player available. I personally think it'll probably be like a Paris Johnson or something. So it's just patch up that line. And then it's no more excuses here for Justin Fields. Uh, they've done everything you can do for a team. I expect them with the money to still figure something out, get Chase Claypool back. I think he's perfectly fine as your split end type wide receiver. DJ Moore is the flanker, the downfield threat here for um, Justin Fields. He can you, he can lean on DJ Moore when he needs him. And then Darnell Munia coming on three wide receiver sets, play the slot. Every now and then him he can rotate across formation with DJ Moore. It's a very interesting team. I mean, Chicago sees the the way this division's going with the giant or with the, with the Packers, with Rogers, uh, not confirmed yet, but imminent supposedly for him to make his exit. Minnesota's made a couple head scratching moves. They're a team that's looking to run it back, but they're no shoe in for the division. 
the Lions are getting better, but it's it's still the Lions. I think the Bears might see this as an opportunity to get right into the mix right away. They're expecting teams maybe like a Carolina to do what they did, where they're gonna they're gonna sit on cap. Maybe Arizona a team like it too, and they're just gonna eat dead cap until they're ready to go all in, like a team like the Bears did last year. And they seem to be ready to to play ball this year. So it's it's a really exciting move. I don't think for DJ Moore personally, he's changed for dynasty i mean it's you got to look at this team's passing volume and what we expect from it could there be a jump like the eagles where it went where their passing volume went way up the the bills where their passing volume went way up it really could it's in the range of outcomes i wouldn't bank on it you had to look at what they gave us how low the passing volume was there for the team for whatever reason and expect that kind of as a medium outcome here for dj Moore. and because that's in the range of outcomes i had him wide receiver 20 before the trade i have him a wide receiver 20 after it's it's a fun little spot to be optimistic because with Carolina, he was never going to get that potential bump that he could have in Chicago. So you raised, so you raised his high end of outcomes, but I'm not getting too crazy here. If you can go flip, you know, get in DJ Moore, move him on those fringe wide receiver one prices, buy into the excitement, sure. But for Justin Fields, that's the real winner here. That's that's the guy where I had question marks taking him, you know, over players like Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, Kyler Murray at the late first, but if you had him or you took him in the third round last year, you got to be pretty darn excited. Uh, they they made all the moves. Now let's not look past. They brought back uh, Blossom Gambi there, their fullback there. He was a big part of the run game. And with Tennessee a couple of years back, he, he was an important part. It tells you that they still want to run the ball. It's the only point I want to bring that up. That would indicate to me yeah. um, that they're looking to run the ball, bring in, you know, blocking tight end, that, that this, this is potentially where they want to go. Uh, Cole Komet is a quiet loser here for this as well. Him and Darnell Mooney, I think, definitely, definitely get it. Definitely yeah. get a hit from where there are players thriving on volume. I just had a live shoot with Coop where we were talking about how you don't want to you don't want to fall in love with players when you had a team like I said with Chicago last year who's just kind of going through the motions almost waiting until they had the draft capital or they were ready to make a move. Uh, the player who ate up the volume because as a result was a player like Darnell Mooney, and then you see just how quickly you know that guy, a day three player, can come in and lose a ton of value overnight uh, so just a note there i do want to say whoever stands out for carolina this year make that note remember sell window don't get darnell mooded uh but those are quiet losers uh, justin field owners got to be real real happy here dj moore stays right about the same for me yeah they were they're also reported in on mike mcglinchy trying to get him to be their right tackle so they're 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 going after it uh todd i got a question for you yep. so let's assume that you know, just, Justin Fields is going to take a little bit of a jump as a passer. Um, there's got to be a possibility here that you actually do want to get in at this price point because if he does improve as a passer, he is absolutely going to be a top five dynasty QB. Um, and if you like look at like you know, underdog right now, he's being drafted as QB five already. So the the sharp best ball drafters who are best at ball drafting right now are already projecting him to take, you know, a jump. They're, they're drafting him at QB5. If you aren't on underdog yet, you can get on underdog and use code JWB for a first-time deposit match up to $100, which you should be doing because it does help you for Dynasty. I realize it's best ball, but you can see things like this and see how the market is projecting these players for the season. You can get a, get a little bit ahead of these players. So do you think this is a price you still want, want to get in on? Honestly, if I had fields... I would probably look at what I could get for him, to be honest with you, because okay, I, I, I kind of feel like where he was at as a passer, like it could eventually get to that point. Right. But we're talking about we're forcing a narrative for forcing that narrative. Right. And he has that running like floor. But the way that the QB situation is right now is that it's so volatile that it's the best time to own a Justin Fields to build out in other ways. And I'm not saying you just trade out like Justin Fields and don't get back a QB. You know what I mean? You go back and you trade down with like, geez, I'm trying to like throw a couple of name off the top of my head. Like Kyler maybe... and Deshaun would be the guys. Sure, exactly. You yeah. can trade down to that and then come bring in another piece with that too. Like that could work. But for me, if you're – looking to rebuild i do think this is the time to to jump in the fields you know it really just depends on your roster construction and what your vision is for your team within the next 
year to three years, you know? See, like, I have a team right now that is probably my worst competitive team. It's like that team where I'm like, I don't have an identity here, but I have Justin Fields. He's going absolutely yeah, fucking nowhere. Yeah, kind of no man's land. <laughs> right, because right. I could trade him and then do other things, but then I'm like, it's also a C2C week, and I have no QB prospects coming up. I really screwed that draft. So the point <laughs> is, is that, like, that's a guy that, like, he's so essential to me in a rebuild. But if I'm if I'm competitive and I have Justin Fields, I would actually be looking to find those people that are looking to buy in before that jump, you know. So I think it's a little bit of both, you know, because I think there's going to be a lot of hype with him now having all these pieces around him, getting a legit wide receiver, you know. So if you're looking to rebuild, you need to jump in on Fields now, right? If you're looking to compete and you have Fields, I'd look to move him so that you can strengthen yourself in other places. Because I think that in one way or the other, he's going to be holding either. You could top out with him later, right? But at the same time, like, I just feel like the hype is just out of control with him right now. When it's like a QB5, I, I just, he's not there for me. I just ran a poll doing C2C uh, standards. Caleb Williams beat him out. No. Like, 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 like 400 votes on that poll, too. You know, like, people wanted Caleb Williams over Justin yeah. Fields. So he's not like he's not exactly. I, I don't agree with that for the record. Yeah, yeah, I can't get there. <laughs> right? No, but ironically, he's the. I would put Caleb like the position behind him. But at the same time, it's like you, you got to understand that. Like, I just don't think it's like that sticky with him yet. So, yeah, yeah, I could see a, an opportunity to want to buy into him. But I also think there's also there's a sell window right now, just with the hype, especially after getting a legit number one wide receiver. Yeah, it depends it what you get. Dependent. Go ahead. It, Sorry, it, no, it, it depends what you get. I will say, like, on the rebuild thing, you say you want to get in there potentially. This, you brought up Williams. This could be your chance you move off of Justin Fields. If you could pick up a 24 first on top four, Kyler Murray, and then in turn put yourself in a better position to get a top three pick next season, that could end up being a, a, a big win in the long term. I don't want to say Justin Fields is getting hyped up. Maybe quarterback five. It's an obvious sell because I don't think it's an obvious sell. If he comes out and produces like he did the back half of last year or even 90 percent of it, uh, we're looking at a potential rise like a Jalen Hurts. I know a year ago, even two years ago, especially we were talking, you got to sell Jalen, you got to sell Jalen, you got to sell Jalen. And then. You know, you say, where can it go up? Well, top five in your startup is where it could go up to. I know it's difficult to say this guy's going seventh in startups, seven, somewhere seven to ten that he could go up. He really could. I mean, obviously, it, you're, you're playing you're playing a little bit with fire, but I wouldn't sell just to sell. I think it's definitely I have to get an overpay for me to come down. If I had a startup last year and I got Justin Fields in the third round, so he's not like the linchpin of my team and I can afford to move off him for. Deshaun and get a wide receiver two type player cool with that if I can get move off of him and get Kyle Murray in a first very cool with that but I'm not selling Justin Field just for the sake of selling this is a situation where I think his value could rise even whether he produces incredibly or not because the excitement's already there when we get them on on a football field especially as we go through the offseason and they make a couple high draft picks still to go it could still go up even before he plays football yeah, I so my whole point about the idea of selling is more about knowing like what you could possibly get in a return. So this is one of the things that I want to clarify from way that I go about buying and selling players, right? I feel like everyone finds a window and it's like you're going to miss out. That's not how I approach it. I go in saying like, what am I looking to get out of this return? If I'm not getting back what I want out of the return, I'm not selling, you know? So I feel like a lot of people... Th when you talk about buying and selling, they're always like, do it before the window closes. Just don't do that. That's a really bad way to yeah, end up get trade bad, you want. Yeah, that's that's a bad way to like end up in situations where you just make moves to make moves. You know what I mean? So like I've like if you talk to Dave about my week or the week that we've had forever for uh Tale of Two Rivals, like I get rejected like freaking crazy until I finally find what I want. You know what I mean? Then he goes, how do you make these trades? I'm like, I'm just really good at being rejected. So, you know, <laughs> but I like, I don't make it bad. But like, to me, it's like, I hold on to that value. So that's a great point. I didn't want to come off to saying like, I think now is the time to sell fields. I think now is the time to kick some tires and see how your league feels about listen, it. What, listen hey, for like, sure. you know what I mean? Because especially like when somebody comes in with a big piece, you got to see to yourself, is somebody getting a little too excited about this? You know? Yeah, and I do think it is league dependent in a way because Justin Fields is a little bit of a decisive player because there's some people who think that he can't be a passer in the NFL. There's some people who are 
sure he will be a great passer in the NFL, you know, kind of ranges there. So I think it's definitely going to have some league dependency 